Hello, welcome to this video tutorial on MPLS configuration step by step. My name is Roger Perkin, I am CCIE number 50038 and in this video we're going to be going through from the very beginning of bringing routers into GNS3 to configuring an MPLS core to adding two sites and having a fully working MPLS lab that you can learn MPLS from. So this is taken from my website. There, are, there is a full written description of this process. I will put a link in the description of the video on YouTube. If you're watching this video on the website, then you're already there, so that's great. But what we're going to be doing is basically this. So we're going to be creating this topology with a three router MPLS core running OSPF in the middle. We'll then set up multi-protocol BGP between router one and router three. We'll then add two remote sites in, peer them with OSPF to router 1 and 3, and then the final step will be to ping from router 4 over to router 6 using MPLS instead of direct layer 3 routing. So this is what I need to build. So we're going to start off with the MPLS core, and to do that we are using GNS3. If you're not aware what GNS3 is or have never used it, then I will be doing another tutorial on this very soon. Uh, but if you are aware of this, you know it's a fantastic tool to simulate networks and you just drag the router in and then join them up. Now the key to this tutorial is that you follow along and make sure that we have the correct um, interface connections here and then all the configurations will match. So I need to create uh, fast ethernet zero to fast ethernet zero and fast ethernet one to fast ethernet zero zero okay so there are all the configuration for this in the blog post so you can follow along with this so we just need to boot these three routers so while they're starting let's go down through and we're going to address the mpls core like this so we're going to use the 10.0.0.0 subnet between 1 and 2 and the 10.0.1 between 2 and 3. Uh, router 1 is going to be addressed dot 1 on this interface, dot 2 on the router 2 interfaces and dot 3 on the 3 interface. We're going to create a loopback on 1 and 3 and we're going to create an OSPF area 0 between all of them. So I've got all the configurations that you can just copy and paste here. So let's go into router one first. And bring that up. See router one is here. So I'm ready on router one. Now I've got a script on my GNS3 that router one comes up as router one. So this configuration is gonna be redundant, but we are just gonna pop this on here. So conf t to configure the router and we're going to paste on these three lines, hostname router 1, a loopback interface and IP OSPF area 1 for the loopback 1 and then we've got interface F00, that can go on and then we've also got interface F00 and we're giving that the address of 10.0.0.1 That's done. So router two, same process. Now router two has a little bit more to do. So you can see we've got two interfaces here. So I need to address F00 and F01. And we've also got a loop back on router two as well. And that is addressed 2222. And then all the interfaces are in OSPF. So we should have full reachability from every router. So let's jump into router two now. Conf D, we'll paste that configuration in. So I've put on a loop back with 222 and the interface F00, which is facing back to router one is gonna be 10.0.0.2. And you can already see that we have an OSPF adjacency come up between uh, router 2 and router 1. So that's great. And then the final 
configuration is router three, where we give that one a loop back of 333, and we're just going to address this F00 interface. So let's console into router three. Router three comes up. Now, router three should now peer OSPF with router one. So I should be able to now, <coughs> excuse me, from router three ping 1.1.1.1, which I can, and ping 2.2.2.2 which I can. So what we've got now is the IP addressing configured on these three devices. So let's just go through a note on here. So we've got 10.0.0.0 slash 24. And that subnet has been configured on this link. We've done 10.0.0.1. That one has been configured on this link. Router one has got a dot one on this interface. Router two has got a dot two on both of its interfaces here. And both of these. And router three, we put a dot three. This is you can address these whatever you like. But now from the current state of this network, I've got a loop back address on router one, which is 1111. And I've got a loop back on two, which is 2222. And a loop back on three is 3333. Three, three. Now this will become more useful as we progress. But just as a test here, we can now see if I go from router three, I have full reachability between router three loopback and routers one's loopback. And that's because I've got OSPF, so I've got an OSPF neighbor of router two, and then go into router two. And if we do show IP OSPF neighbor on router two, we've got two neighbors, three and one. So that is stage one complete. So we should have full IP connectivity between router one, two, and three. And there are some more verifications in the blog post there. So the second step, we need to enable MPLS. So at each interface that is facing into the network, we need to enable MPLS. Now, there are two ways of doing this, and we're going to do this under OSPF. So we're going to say root OSPF1 MPLS LDP auto config. So what this will do is for every OSPF enabled interface, it will enable LDP. So once we start enabling LDP, you will start to see LDP neighborships forming between the routers. So let's go on to router one and just paste that command OSPF1 MPLS LDP auto config. And the same on router two. So nothing happens at the moment, but now when we put the auto config on, here we go. So we've now got a neighbor, and uh, we've got a neighbor with 1.1.1.1, and same on router three. So this is the first step to enable MPLS, and it's enabling the routing, the LDP protocol on the interfaces. So that's that done, and you'll see this is all listed in the blog here. The log messages come up showing LDP neighbors. And then to verify the MPLS interfaces, the command is very simple. We just type on each router show MPLS interface. Now this will tell me that I've got fast ethernet 00 enabled for MPLS. And on this one, no MPLS interface. So we are in a good position. And you can also verify the LDP neighbors with show MPLS LDP neighbor. So let's do that one, show MPLS LDP neighbor. 
uh, we should have two, which is root of one and root of three. So we are progressing now. And the final thing is we can uh, confirm LDP is running by doing a trace. So if we do a trace from root of one to root of three, trace 3.3.3.3, .3 you will see that the routers now are not um, doing direct routing straight through. They are actually adding labels onto this. Now, this is a bit deep to go into this on the first step, but just to be aware that we are now starting to add label information to the IP packets that are going across. So next step is to configure multi-protocol BGP between routers one and three. So let's just have a look on the diagram. What we're gonna do is we've now got full layer three routing between all of these devices and all of the interfaces. What we need to do now is we're going to, on here, enable multi-protocol BGP that's multi-protocol BGP between router one and router three. So this is in effect creating a tunnel, uh, which is what we're gonna be doing eventually between these two. Um, so your MPLS core could actually be multiple routers. Um, in our example, we've just got one, but this could be a service provider's network. It could be vast. And what you're trying to do is create these BGP multi-protocol connections between the end devices. So let's go into the config and see what we need to do. So on router one, we are gonna say, router BGP one, uh, neighbor 3333, three, 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 that's fine. And then we're gonna go into the address family of VPN v4, which is where the MPNS is gonna really kick in. And we're gonna say neighbor 333 three, three, activate. So let's just do that one on router one. Neighbor activate. And we go over to router three and I'll take the config here. And once this one goes on router three, we should see uh, this BGP neighbor come up. And this is not as quick as OSPF. And if we go down to here, you should see a log message. And to verify the BGP session between one and three, there it goes. So we've now got a BGP adjacency between router one and router three. And I've copied that verification command, show BGP VPN v4 unicast all summary. And this now tells me that we do indeed have a VPN v4 neighbor to 1.1.1. Now, the next step is to add two more routers to the topology, router four and router six. So we're gonna uh, drop them in. Don't ask me what happened to router five. Router four, and we'll pop router six over here. So that's gonna be five. I'm gonna put a six in. This is gonna be the easiest way to do that. This is just to keep things clear on the diagram. And we're gonna connect F00 to F01. And on this side, F01 again to F00. All right. These are gonna be our customer sites here. Let's start those devices as well. Let's go down through here. So router four is gonna appear OSPF using process number two to a VRF configured on router one. So what we're gonna do on router one is configure a VRF, which is a virtual routing and forwarding instance. So like a separate routing table within router one. So this is how you can have this router one be on a customer site and you can have multiple routing tables in here with the same IP routing, but on the same subnets, but for different customers. 
and they're all separated in virtual routing tables. So let's jump into router four now. All I'm doing here is just copying the config. And if you're not sure of what's going on, just go back through the blog post. You can reference each step one at a time. So we've just now given the router four a 192.168.1.4 address. We've given it a loop back and we've added it into OSPF process two, into area two. And then on router one, I'm just going to give this one an IP address. Now, at the moment, I have not put the interface F01 into the VRF. So from router 1, I can ping directly 192.168.1.4. I can. And if we go back to our diagram now, we've now got 192.168.1.4 that is configured over here. And I've got 192.168.1.1 configured on this side. So I can now ping between these two, that's fine. Now, at this point, we have R4 um, peering to 1, but it's in the global routing table of router 1, which is not what we want. We're now going to start using VRFs. So a quick introduction here of what a VRF is. Um, it's a virtual routing and forwarding technology. And I just want to double check that show IP OSPF interface brief. That you can see we don't currently have a neighbor ship on F A01 on there. So we haven't we're not peering yet. We'll, we'll address that in a second. Now, first of all, we're going to create the VRF. This is like this. IP VRF, and we're going to call this one red. This is just a name, this can be anything. The root descriptor is 4 colon 4, and the root target is 4 colon 4. Now these numbers are actually different. Uh, they do different jobs but for the purposes of your first steps into MPLS let's keep them the same. I do have another article which explains in depth the difference between the root target and the root distinguisher uh, which I will also link in the description of this video which you can check out. Uh, that is linked there also in the blog post. So now we've configured the VRF on router 1, we need to move that interface into the VRF. So to do that, you go into interface F01 and you say IP VRF forwarding and the name of the VRF. Oops. And when you do that, it actually rips the IP address off. So you now need to reapply the IP address back to the interface. So that's something to be aware of. And now if I ping 192.168.1.4, which is router 4, I won't be able to ping it because I'm pinging it from the global routing table. And if I say show IP route, you can see here we don't have 192, but if I say show IP route, VRF red, that is where that route lives. And if I ping 192.168.1.4 VRF red, sorry, ping VRF red 192.168.1.4. Now you can ping it. So you're pinging it from the virtual routing table. And that is all explained in the post there. This is case sensitive. Um, we now need to enable OSPF on this interface so that it peers to routing four. So from the interface that's facing router four, interface F0 slash one, uh, all the config, I'm just taking it from each block here. So 
you can do that if you want OSPF 2 area 2 so now we've got a neighbor ship on router 1 but within the VRF so again I've got a loop back on router 4 of 4444 4, 4, 4. but if I say show IP route we do not see 4444 4, 4, 4 in there but if you say show IP route VRF red this is where you will see that interface so that's fine and again the descriptions here are showing you to find the routes now we need to repeat this process also on router 3 and 6 so what I've done here let's just recap is we've put this interface F00 into VRF red we have peered OSPF on a different process between 4 and 1 and if we now check the routes on router 1 in the VRF we can see the routes in here we have to do the same on this side so let's go to router 6 So that one hasn't got any addressing or anything at the moment. So we can take all the address details here and place that on there. And we go into router three and just address the interface that's facing out to router six. Okay, so remember we are now in the global routing table. So ping 192.168.2.6. That comes back, but that's currently in the global routing table. We need to create the VRF. Now this needs to match on three as it did on one. And then we add the interface on router 3 into the VRF. Remember the IP address gets ripped off. So we need to reapply it. We put the IP address back on again. Now here's a little way you can show the interface. So if we say show run interface F0 slash 1, it tells me that this interface is in the VRF forwarding of red and this is its IP address. And then finally, let's just enable OSPF on that interface. And that should then peer up to router 6. If we say show IP root VRF red, now we've got the neighbor ship. We have got the routes coming in, and we've got 6666 in the VRF routing table. And if we say show IP root, we are looking in the global routing table of which they do not exist. Okay, so we've come a long way. Let's review. So we've now got this situation. Router 1, 2 and 3, OSPF between them all, multi-protocol BGP between the two routers, and then we've also got router 4 and router 1 peering OSPF in a VRF on router 1, and router 3 and 6 peering OSPF to a VRF on router 3. Now, before we go, let's do a few checks. So on router 4, these are the routes. Right now, if I say, so just in router 4, show IP route, we've got the local route. So all we can see so far is the routes that we've got on this part of the network. What we're trying to do is to get 6666 into the table of router 4, all the way over here, all the way over MPLS. And if we check the routes on router 1, you can see we don't have them either. And it's all explained in here. Remember, we have a 
a VRF configured on this router. So this command will show the routes in the global routing table, will not show the routes that are on the external sites here. But if we do show IP root VRF, then you will see that. Now we need to do the following. Redistribute OSPF into multi-protocol BGP on router one. So here, redistribute multi-protocol BGP into OSPF on router one, and then the same on router three. So we're gonna basically take the OSPF routes that we have here and put them into multi-protocol BGP. And then we're going to take the routes that we get from multi-protocol BGP and put them into OSPF and the same on three. Sounds quite complicated, but all we're doing is saying, I want to put the OSPF routes into multi-protocol BGP and the multi-protocol routes into OSPF. So router one first. Router BGP one, address family IPv4, redistribute, OSPF2. Same on router 3. Router BGP1. So that's put the OSPF routes into multi protocol BGP. And we can verify that with. IP BGP VPN V4 VRF red. So we've now got 4444 and we are seeing 6666. So we're getting that route now over from router 6. And then we need to go back the other way. So we now go into OSPF on router one and redistribute BGP in. And then onto router three. And redistribute that one in. So if this has all worked, we should be able to now ping 6666 from router four. But before we do, let's just check the routes that we have on router four. So this is just normal routing, show IP route. And you can see we now have 6666 in there. And I should be able to ping 6.6.6.6. .6 .6 .6. And you see when you do a trace, now it is using MPLS labels uh, to get across this cloud or the, uh, the MPLS core in the middle. And we'll go back to router six and check that's the other way around. So now on router six, show IP route. And I've got the four. So I should be able to ping 444. And if I trace to 4444, you should see it using those labels. So that is it. We have configured MPLS on two sites across a three router OSPF core. And at the end of the post, there are those two articles that I mentioned, the um, most important one, the differences between route distinguisher and route target and also some tips on MPLS LDP troubleshooting. I hope you've enjoyed this and I appreciate that we've just rushed through that. It's quite a long process. This took me a long time to actually get my head around and that's the reason that I did uh, write this in the first place, is just to clarify all these concepts in my head. But I'll link this, read this through again, print it out, draw on it, do whatever, and then step through here and you will learn the concepts of MPLS very easily. Thank you for watching. Um, if you've enjoyed this video, please subscribe at the end and there will be more videos coming along very shortly. Thank you very much.